Okay, so in the previous video we are still talking about ring homomorphisms. We saw this theorem. A homomorphism from the integers to a ring with unity. This is a special ring, not any kind of ring. So let R be a ring with unity, with the, the, the identity, <coughs> multiplicative identity, of course. The mapping that takes from the integers to the ring given by n that takes to n identity is a ring homomorphism and we you can check the previous video for the proof for this and now I would like to show you a couple of corollaries for this theorem so corollary number one a ring with unity either contains Zn or the integers. If R is a ring with unity and the characteristic of R is positive, then R contains a subring isomorphic to Zn. If the characteristic of the ring is zero, then R contains a subring isomorphic to the integers. Okay, um, so if if R is a ring, a ring with unity, okay, and the characteristic of this, so the uh, characteristic is greater than zero, then this R will have a sub this this ring with unity will have a sub ring let us call it a and this sub ring a since it this ring has characteristic n greater than zero so the characteristic is n so this ring will have a sub ring this ring with unity will have a sub ring and that sub ring Will have will be is isomorphic is isomorphic to Zn. If the characteristic of the ring is zero, the same ring with unity characteristic zero, then R contains a ring. I choose here a different one. Contains a subring. Sorry, contains a subring isomorphic to the integers. Okay. So basically, a ring with unity, if it has characteristic n, positive n, there will be a subring isomorphic to Zn. If a ring with unity has characteristic 0, there will be a subring isomorphic to the integers. We have a second corollary. So z this is m. Zm is a homomorphic image of the integers. So we pick m, a positive integer, and phi is a homomorphism, a mapping from the integers to, uh, to z of m. Okay? Uh, taken this way, x is taken to x module m. So this is a ring homomorphism. Okay, very easy to prove because you use the previous theorem. Okay, for instance, if imagine you're talking about z3, if x equals 5, so f5 will multiply 5 times 1, so it will be 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, and in Z3 this is 2. Okay, just check the proof for the, the theorem. Okay, so Zm is a homomorphic image of the integers. Okay, just take this, this mapping and this is a ring homomorphism. And now I show you here a third corollary. A field contains Zp or the rationals. This is a theorem due to a uh, 
famous mathematician from the beginning of the 20th century, I think, 1900 and something, called Steinitz. Okay, so uh, if F is a field of characteristic P, then F contains a subfield isomorphic to ZP. If F is a field of characteristic 0, then F contains a subfield isomorphic to the rational numbers. Okay. Okay, so we have a field, right? And if this field is of characteristic P, the characteristic is P, let's write it. This is not proper notation, but it's okay. If the, uh, usually only char, if the characteristic of the field is P, then this field will contain a subfield, let us call it something like M, isomorphic to, so there will be a subfield that is isomorphic to ZP. Okay, but if F is a field of characteristic zero, so if the characteristic, characteristic of F is zero, then F will contain a subfield, so there will be, a, let us change the letters, yeah, okay, there will be a subfield, I don't want to, uh, to use G here, um, I'm going to call it N this time, so F is a field, characteristic zero, then F contains a subfield, there will be a subfield contained, or a subfield in F and isomorphic to the rational numbers. Okay, so you can take some conclusions from the characteristic of the field. Okay, that's what the third corollary or corollary number three says. And we jump directly into a very important and very beautiful um, aspect. Uh, you know that, I'm going to write it here, you know that Z, um, everybody knows that Z is not a field. So, let us, but Z is an integral domain, right? Uh, but and Z is contained in a field. Z is contained in the field of the rational numbers. Okay. And at the end of the day, if you look well, what are the rational numbers? The rational numbers, what is a rational number? A, a rational number is a division of two integers. So, the field of rational numbers is nothing else than quotients of integers, division of integers, quotients of integers. Now, question. Um, can we use this sort of construction, taking elements from an integral domain and build I'm going to use this word, built a field with elements from an integral domain. Well, the answer is yes, we can. That's what we call, so if you divide the elements, you're dividing the elements in order to construct the field, right? You're dividing the elements from an integral domain to construct a field, right? Right. So that's what we call a field of quotients. Okay? So let D be a, an integral domain. If D is an integral domain, then there exists a field F 
and this field is going to be called the field of quotients of D, that contains a subring isomorphic to D. Okay, so you have D here. Okay, and D is an integral domain. Okay, D is here. Okay, so you know that there will be a field. If D is an integral domain, then there will be a field. I'm going to call this field F. And this field will um, contain a subring. This subring here will contain a subring. I'm going to call it D prime. And D prime is isomorphic to D. Okay. Um, and here I give you an example. Let us say that D is the um, polynomials with um, integer coefficients, right? Okay, polynomials with integer coefficients. Um, so this is an integral domain, right? So Will there be a field of quotients of D? Yes. So D will be the set of F of G <coughs> dividing G of X, F of X dividing G of X such that F of X and G of X are uh, in D. So they live here in D. Okay. Of course, G of X, since it is in the denom denominator, cannot be zero. Okay, so this will be the field of quotients of D. Okay, we usually call this set the, um, the set of rational functions. Okay, very easy and very simple, all this. Okay, and we have and here, and we move into. I don't know, I think we are going to polynomial rings or something like that now.